Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous. African elections, like those in many regions, are critical milestones in the democratic process. They provide citizens with the opportunity to elect their leaders and shape the direction of their countries. However, these elections often attract international attention and sometimes face criticism or interference from external entities. Zimbabwean President Emerson Manangagwe has recently addressed concerns about Western interference in African elections. He has cautioned against undue involvement from Western nations, expressing the importance of allowing African countries to conduct their elections independently and without external influence. He was quoted as saying, we will not, as the people of Zimbabwe, we will not allow the Western countries to dictate to us. We don't dictate to them. The head of state made the call as Zimbabwe prepares to head to the polls this August in what may likely be the most contested post Mugabe elections. But today on the program, we want to analyze the statement made by uh, the head of state of Zimbabwe, of course, uh, saying that it is uh, the end time for Western interference uh, in uh, uh, local elections or in elections that could actually undermine the autonomy or sovereignty of African states, especially uh, Zimbabwe, as the country gets towards another presidential election uh, that will see the uh, nations or citizens elect their political leaders that will lead the country for the next five years. Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous. We will not, as the people of Zimbabwe, allow Western nations or countries to dictate uh, to us uh, words of uh, current Zimbabwean President Emerson Nangagwa, who made a clarion call as the country uh, prepares to head to the polls in another uh, presidential election to select or elect uh, democratic leaders in uh, Zimbabwe that will lead the country in the next uh, five years. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us on this other edition of the program. It is Views on the Continent, and our focus today uh, is still an interference, but this time around on the aspect of uh, elections in Africa, we are capitalizing on the statement made by the uh, strongman of Zimbabwe, uh, uh, saying there is, it is time to shun Western interference in elections in uh, internal affairs that can undermine the sovereignty of African states. However, his statement, which he made as he signed a patriotic uh, bill, which attracted uh, criticisms uh, from uh, Zimbabweans uh, uh, in, uh, in Zimbabwe and beyond actually is uh, becoming problematic as some people are of, of a viewpoint of that the statement is actually applied by the uh, head of state who has actually filed his candidature for the next presidential election to continue to rule uh, Zimbabwe. And of course, uh, that's what we want to underline in today's edition of the program, understanding the stakes involved in the statement, what it means Western interference in local or international or internal elections, and how this can go to undermine the sovereignty of uh, African states. And of course, uh, this is a compelling TV program that brings to you a, a panel of experts giving uh, insight on this very important topic for the, the stakes involved in election interference and of course how African countries in present context can avoid this while uh, maintaining their democratic processes and of course ensuring uh, that they define their democracy which align with uh, the uh, culture of the uh, African continent. 
Thank you once more. If you are just tuning in, you're welcome. This is Views on the Continent. Time for us to uncover the panel. And of course, with pleasure, I want to introduce to you Professor Mark Anthony, who is joining in his capacity as a political scientist and also a Pan-Africanist to give insight on this topic for discussion this day. Hello to you, Professor Mark Anthony. It's a pleasure having you this day. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you, uh, Clarice, for the opportunity to be here today to discuss on a topic such as this and uh, to actually empower Africans to stand for Africa. I also want to say hello to my fellow panelists and to all those in Africa watching us and around the globe. All Africans, we call on you to stand with Zimbabwe from now. Thank you so much. It's about uh, looking for African solutions to African problems and in every dimension. Let's go now to acknowledge the presence of uh, uh, Professor Jose Matemulani. He's joining in his capacity as President uh, uh, Association for Free Research and International Cooperation Africa. Hello to you, Professor. It's a pleasure having you once more on African Media Television. Hello, 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 Clarice. Hello, uh, my colleague panel. It's uh, it's a pleasure. It's my pleasure to be with you today in this uh, in this program uh, to discuss the a very important uh, issue that uh, concerns the Zimbabwe, <clears throat> one of the uh, main African countries of the of this of the south. Yeah, with the, one of the countries that is um, is fighting for for its uh, independence, truly, uh, truly independence. Yeah. So, thank you. We should be thanking you for making out time to be with us this day to analyze this very important topic. And of course, if you are just tuning in, it is Views on the Continent. Before analyzing the topic less uh, with the help of the technician, let's get this excerpt where President Emerson Nangagwa is underlining in uh, strong terms uh, the needs to shun a Western interference in Zimbabwe and any country across Africa. Let's listen I'll, and I will join you right after that. We will not, we will not, as the people of Zimbabwe, we will not allow the Western countries to dictate to us. We don't dictate to them. This interference from outside is unacceptable. We as a sovereign state and a member of the United Nations, we have a sovereign right to run our elections and interfered. Those countries who want to observe must restrict themselves to the role of observing our elections, not to interfere in that process. Who will not accept it. After all, after all, they have elections full of fault, 5%, and the leading growing economy in the region in spite of nefarious sanctions imposed on our economy and our country. And that uh, was the president of uh, Zimbabwe, Emil Sedmanangonga. Of course, uh, he has highlighted in his excerpt that if Zimbabwe is going uh, through the economic hardship uh, that we find in present day society, it is partly because of the economic sanctions imposed uh, by uh, the United States and all the uh, European Union countries, and of course, which brings it to be very problematic and uh, which aligns uh, somehow uh, 
with uh, the uh, topic for today, uh, the aspect of elections observation or observing and how, of course, this can be done uh, without interference in the country's sovereignty. I'll come and start, uh, of, of course, uh, kick off with you, Professor Jose Matemulani. Of course, today we are looking at uh, this uh, Western interference that the leadership of Zimbabwe is calling uh, uh, for an end. Let's, of course, define uh, Western interference in the context of African elections and, of course, in your own perspective, what are some of the examples of this interference that you believe uh, have had significant uh, effects on uh, countries across Africa? Uh, well, uh, Western interference in, in African countries, in African elections, through elections, um, is, some, is something very common in Africa, actually. It's very common and it's start even being more or less I mean, normal because most of the countries, um, let's say, uh, now, okay, thing, thing might, might be changing a bit, but, but uh, mostly mm, uh, the countries, African countries, even seem to be proud when they, when they had uh, Western delegations <clears throat> observing their elections. Yeah, so it gave it gave more. I mean, the, the, the gave more legitimacy to the, to the elections. But as we know, all these uh, uh, these organizations, the Western organizations that um, observe elections, are, are simply uh, doing the job, which is guarantee that um, the the influence in the countries, the, the, the neo-colonialism uh, proceeds uh, in the continent. So um, it, it has always been like that. So in the, in the case of Zimbabwe right now, uh, as we know, Zimbabwe and the President Mnangagwa say that so Zimbabwe has been under sanctions for a long time, very severe sanctions. And somehow, uh, with of, and of course, with lots of uh, challenges, uh, the country is standing. The country uh, is, uh, is struggling and is striving. So uh, uh, the thing is that the, the Western countries uh, they didn't didn't forget Zimbabwe. They still want it to uh, to come back to the to their orbit, to their orbit. So. Uh, in this, uh, regarding this, so the Western countries are not, are not, I mean, are not, uh, not, uh, not sleeping. They, they're putting money, putting influence, everything they have in whoever candidate who can guarantee that. So um, again, coming and in into the the meddling in internal affairs, the uh, the interference on, the, on those affairs so from the Western countries, uh, we we have to understand. I repeat it that it's a, a normal status of I mean of the things for Western countries. They they deeply depend on African African not only African but most African African resources to continue um, showing their I mean <laughs> their development uh, the way uh, to, to continue uh, living the way they're living. Okay. Uh, but now it's, it's the time. Yes, now it's the time that uh, for African countries uh, fight for for their sovereignty, for their autonomy, and especially for Zimbabwe. Especially for Zimbabwe, because Zimbabwe, uh, as I said before, has suffered a lot from this, those sanctions, and it's it would be very it would, would be a pity, and very sad if Zimbabwean uh, someone. He came into power in Zimbabwe and turned uh, the ship back to, towards the, the Western, the Atlantic. So, uh, in regarding this, I hope African African countries, African observation organizations, the, uh, will will be present there and will fix. I mean, uh, all, all all the situations with the with the elections. Yes, thank you. 
under the uh, topic, Professor Jose Matemelani. Uh, coming back to you, uh, Professor Mark Anthony. Of course, we are talking about uh, Western uh, interference, which uh, the leadership of Zimbabwe is actually calling against as the country uh, braces for another presidential elections that will see nations uh, elect their political leaders. Now, like uh, I uh, highlighted in the preamble, the statement uh, made by Prof. Uh, uh, President Emerson actually met a resistance, and some people feel like the leadership met uh, this call this time because uh, of uh, political uh, for political reasons uh, that he wants to uh, maintain a, a solid uh, grip on uh, Zimbabwe and, of course, to rule the country with an iron fist. What is your perspective <coughs> on uh, this call and, of course, with uh, everything that has happened in the electoral processes of African countries uh, till date? Thank you very much, Clarice. Uh, I want to say before I get to respond to that question, mm -hmm. I actually want to remind us Africans. There's a statement I always make, uh, which was inspired. Uh, anytime you're fighting for, for an African, you should do your best to fight with one hand while using the other hand to protect yourself. Why do I say so? It is very funny how Africans want change, Africans want progress, they want to have total power over their territories and resources, they want to control everything, but they fight those who are willing and working to assure that their very desires are fulfilled. For example, looking at the statement of Nangangwa, uh, President Emerson, you realize that he is working based on the general consensus of African leaders as well as African people. Where the desire of Africans at the moment as we are talking is to have sovereign rule over their continent. Africa belongs to Africans. And it is very contradictory that when Europeans are doing elections, you do not hear that Africans are going to control their elections. You do not hear that Africans, they, we, we want to send observatory bodies to go check what they are doing. It, it, they believe that it is their right and duty, I mean Europeans, to come to Africa and impose upon Africa what they think should work in Africa. But I want to remind them, Westerners, you guys from the north, do not know what happens in the south. In Africa, we have systems that had been in place that had worked before you invaded Africa and destroyed them. But those systems have not been completely eroded and so they can still be exploited. And so as African people, we will want to be able to construct an Africa that is fit for Africans. An Africa that is willing to incorporate everybody and be able to give out its values to the world. But if you do not permit us to build on these values, to establish the very political um, the policies that we want, to put in place the various policies that can guide our economies, that can guide our politics, then you are indirectly wanting to allow us to remain slaves. So I think Africans, it is time for Africans to get to the place where they understand that we have the right to build an Africa that is suit for Africans, not an Africa dictated by the Europeans. The governmental systems that we are implementing were forced upon us during colonialism. And so after 60 years of so-called independence, it is but normal for Africans to be able to establish their own system that permits them to run their continent without any external influence. And so when it happens that the West at every given moment needs to tell you what to do, for example, I saw how Macron was running all over Africa recently 
I've seen how the Secretary of State for the United States was running all over Africa, struggling to influence the way we do things. European Union, everywhere in Africa. We do not want all that. It is very important that we get to know something. Africans as a people, we had our lifestyle before the Europeans came in through their slavery, picking some of our brothers out of the continent. And when they, just, they got fed up with the abusive nature of treating other humans simply because they are not of the same skin color with them, they decided to say, okay, let's stop, abolish slave trade. We didn't, we're not involved as Africans. We we're the ones who were suffering. We we're supposed to be paid for, for the labor, for the destruction of our families, because I will tell you, families were cut into pieces, broken into parts. Some were carried to Europe, some were carried to the South Americans, some were carried to the North Americans to work and build Europe, to work and build the United States. And all that, they did not see any reason to pay reparations for that. Now, they came back into Africa say colonialism. We were not a people that were living on trees, neither were we having a dark continent. Africa was well developed. And you can see for yourself, if you are willing to see, that the greatest and the most strongest civilization that ever existed is still standing with proof in Africa. You come to Egypt, that is proof to tell you that Africans had built and we will say this to you. We introduce the so modern civilization for you. And so you don't underrate and discredit a people of their intelligence because you want to show your supremacy. Struggling to show how supreme, su 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 superior you are in the midst of a people struggling to work to build is a means of making yourself a little person in front of them. And so I want to say this. Africans have the right to build an Africa that belongs to them. And so when President Emerson actually said, they, we will say no to foreign interference, it is the outcry of every African. And as a Pan-Africanist, it is but normal for us to build an Africa that belongs to Africans. I see today when a, an African goes to Europe, they are reminded that they are no Europeans. Everywhere there is racism in Europe, there is racism in the United States. Every African knows that they don't belong to Europe, they don't belong to the United States. We belong to Africa. And when we are struggling to build an Africa that is for Africans, I think that Europeans should give us a distance. Allow us to build. We are working for our people. So no interference is accepted. And so what the president said is accepted by me and I will say majority of Africans everywhere around the world. A handful of them who have been brainwashed will get to say that he is saying all this might be because he wants to manipulate power. No. If we have to become a continent that will be able to stand as equals with other continents of the world, then we need strong men to build. Why building? We have to build strong institutions. And so strong institutions do not appear. They are built by strong men. And so I think it is time for Africans to realize this and stop the stupid criticism that they go to criticize simply because they have been brainwashed. If you do not understand what has been happening for generations, for more than 500 years today, then there is a problem with you. Europeans had taken hostage of Africa for more than 500 years. I'm talking about Europeans. I am not talking also Islamic invasion and slavery that took place. Don't forget, Africa has been suffering for close to a millennium. Our people since the seventh century were taken slavery, taken into slavery by the Arabians. And it continued by the 14th century, 15th century, Europeans came. And today, they want us to still keep on copying from them when they have nothing. What they are struggling to bring to us has failed over there. Let them allow us to build what we want to build for ourselves and our people. Africa needs 
peace. Africa needs stability. Africa needs economic progress and development. And that cannot be done by aid from Europe. It cannot be done by aid from the U.S. It can only be done by Africans who decide to build Africa. Economic development is ours to do, not from interfere. No, nobody should interfere here. Anthony, economic development is asked to do, but then uh, we, we, we look at uh, the, uh, uh, the, the political sphere, of course, how conducive is it uh, to ensure uh, this economic development? Coming back to you, Professor Jose Matimilani, uh, with the statement of uh, President Emerson Manangaga that uh, suggests that African nations should conduct uh, their elections without external influence. Uh, uh, of course, you have actually uh, aligned with this uh, perspective. The question is, now some parties, even still in Africa, feel like for elections in Africa to be coined or declared free and fair, there is need for international uh, observers or for external uh, uh, observers coming from the Western uh, or other European countries to be present on the field to be able to to guarantee this uh, uh, free and fair electoral process. What's your own perspective on, on this? Do you think for African nations or uh, elections in Africa to be termed free and fair, there is need for uh, international observers to be part of the, uh, uh, the process to, for it to gain that status quo? Uh, well, uh, let, me, let me agree with what, what my, my colleague was saying about um, building uh, strong in institutions uh, in Africa, uh, because they don't appear just like that. Uh, they need strong people, strong politicians, strong leaders to build them. And you, you uh, at the moment, uh, the period where it, uh, you have to do that is usually uh, the beginning of the, the, the building of, of, of the nation, okay, the building of the nation. So. Uh, we still, we still, uh, Zimbabwe is still in, um, I mean, in, in the beginning of that, that, that path. And um, uh, there is, it's, it's a reality for Zimbabwe and most, most countries in Africa, but in Zimbabwe, we have the ZANU PF in, in power since independence. Um, of course, uh, the, the party itself has uh, major challenges. That's why we need stronger leaders because, um, okay, these, these issues of corruption and, uh, uh lack of uh no i mean mismanagement uh, lack of uh, uh skilled skilled people to to hold so to lead the 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 nation uh is uh, is an issue yes yet but uh, we have to start from somewhere and Mnangagwe is is doing that is doing that because we've seen that uh no not zimbabwe didn't turn out didn't, didn't turn into uh, to Eritrea, for example, or to uh, to Somalia, so, yeah, Somalia was faced. Not a, Zimbabwe is not a failed state. It's not a failed state. It's, it's, it's a state that is struggling, is doing everything it can to to, to tackle this the uh, the restrictions uh, imposed by the, the sanctions imposed by by the Western countries. So we have to start. I mean, the, Zimbabwe has to to build that those those institutions. Uh, of course, you will need some reform inside the the, the, the leading party and the, to bring more uh, young people uh, to power because the Western are exploiting this situation by by empowering, uh, let's say, Chamisa. Because it's not a secret that that, uh, that Chamisa is a is a Western puppet uh, who is running for for election in, uh, in Zimbabwe just for. I mean to to turn the ship back to to the Atlantic to the Western countries to the Western side of the world. So, uh, so after that, after having those institutions uh, built and strongly uh, implanted in the country, uh, we can talk about or Zimbabwe in this case uh, can can talk about uh, uh, even shifting uh, to to a model of, of in the ruling model uh which is more more african based than than western based because all this this issue with elections as we all know i mean i, I always uh, talk about it. i say um come on people uh, before before the americans came to, uh, 
to America before oh better before the Europeans came to America and killed all all uh, indigenous people uh, and built the, what they call the the democracy there. Uh, the world uh, the, was 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 developing. I mean, you have China for which has more than five thousand years. Yeah, as uh, as uh, Mark Anthony was saying, Africa is a is a uh, very rich and ancient uh, I mean, civilization. Uh, the, uh, and you have the Arab countries the, which were developing. Uh, and again, we, when writing, we're using using ciphers, numbers, which are, for instance, Arabic. Yeah, but uh, they, they keep on telling telling us that the uh, Arabs uh, are terrorists. They, they can they cannot do whatever it is. They they, they are incapable for of achieving any. <laughs> And in heights in, in terms of civilization, uh, but um, the, the world was developing. Was developing. There was no democracy in each country. I mean, each civilization uh, had um, has its, its own history, and the way the leads, the way the political and economical issues are are run, uh, they are in accord to the to those to those tradition, uh, local tradition, historical tr uh, traditions. So I think I think it's it's, it's time now. Yes, uh, that's what we have now. We have to use the, the, this this um, uh, let's say in, in commerce, the democratic uh, um, procedures, but uh, working to shift it back to to what what is uh, is more African, and we all know it's a kind of um, uh, it's like an axioma. You, you you need stability to build something uh, something strong, yes. And you, you you will not have stability by shifting, changing leaders every five years, okay. Uh, and in Africa, I mean, this this these elections work like um, like a sabotage uh, a sabotage uh, process, a sabotage, a sabotage machine, because. Um, you might see, for example, Zimbabwe, or Mozambique, for example, have the same part in the power, in the, in the power since the independence. But uh, after every election, you have changes, structural changes that um, undermine the development of the country itself. Yes, they uh, created new ministries, and then they ban and the, uh, they ban it. So in the next five years, you have another minister, the same president, same same party, but always changing things because. The, the West is leading. The West is saying what is better to do, what's best to, to be done in this or that moment. And so, uh, I do agree with the, the fact, with the, the, the thesis that uh, we we have to shift to uh, to uh, that kind of leadership that is truly African, which uh, takes in account our culture, our history. And um, if we do so, I think we might say so we will actually succeed. And we have to chase all these guys who are who are uh, getting African, I mean, uh, Western money, and uh, uh, who are willing to to give to give whatever they have just to to make uh, to turn Africa into uh, or to permanently turn Africa in, in, into into European uh, colony. So. We have to, to change that situation. Professor Jose, a very sad need for a drastic change uh, in Africa uh, to make things uh, right. Uh, in the same perspective, uh, Professor uh, Mark Anthony, uh, we listened to Professor Jose highlighting, of course, uh, that Zimbabwe is still suffering from the economic sanctions imposed even uh, in the reign of then uh, President Robert Mugabe. And of course, he also highlighted uh, one of the presidential candidates. Uh, 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 Chamesar as uh, uh, a candidate that is backed by the West. Uh, I will bear, of course, uh, with everything that is happening across the African continent, the heightened geopolitics, and of course, uh, for the need by countries uh, uh, to carve their sphere of influence. Uh, we, we begin to look at how this is affecting uh, elections in Africa, and of course, how uh, some private individuals are being actually uh, financed uh, by uh, these countries with interest. My question now is to be able to solve uh, maybe uh, uh, solve the economic uh, uh, woes or crisis as Zimbabwe is facing right now, 
do you think or uh, what do you think are the right parameters to be used because at the moment uh, the dollar uh, is still affecting uh, Zimbabwe uh, and of course w with the economic sanctions noting that Zimbabwe is being still tacked to the dollar so in your own perspective what uh, new uh, partners do you think can can uh, engage more economically uh, with uh, Zimbabwe to be able to salvage this uh, economic crisis, which have, of course had a very grave effect on uh, Zimbabweans. Of course, we are talking about uh, a partnership that does not actually uh, violate the autonomy or sovereignty of uh, independent nations like Zimbabwe. Okay, thank you very much for that question. I actually want to remind us that uh, we are talking about building Africa. And actually, building Africa uh, means that at times for you to build, you need to break down before you build again. And if you remember, today we, we have a Ghana that is getting stronger and stronger. Today we have a Nigeria that is having one of the most strongest economies in Africa. It's in fact, the first economy in Africa. Once upon a time, there were nations that were completely broken down. I remember in the 90s, in the 80s, in the 90s, Ghana was completely, a, in fact, was one of the poorest nations in Africa. Where I remember a time where we used to talk of Ghana must go. If you remember that, you ask the question, what has given them the economic stability and the progress that they have today? Let me explain to you how it happened. There is just one way. A strong man decided to take over power and built the nation. When he built the nation, he as well built a strong institution and allowed in that nation. Most of us will remember J.J. Rollins for being one of the greatest Pan-Africanists of his time, but we do not know that as a soldier, he seized power from a corrupt regime that was in existence in the 1980s. And when he seized power, he thought it wise to say, okay, these corrupt leaders need to be pushed aside. He gave the powers again to another uh, uh, civilian to, to lead. He came in with the same corruption. And what did he do? He had to seize power from his hands. This time around, he did not joke with it. He, ex he executed all corrupt persons that were in, in, in that uh, government during that period of time. And he took his time, over 20 good years, to build a strong system that has permitted the political uh, 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 s leadership of the country to be regulated. But that could not have happened if he did not take more than 20 years to build. Yes, some people called him a dictator. Yes, some people called him all the names he did, but he built a strong Ghana. Today, Ghana is progressing. I will tell you the same thing happened in Nigeria. A lot of coup d'etats. Different leader, military regimes were coming and taking power. Babangida uh, Baba was one of the last. And is it a bacha? Yes, was it one of the last. And it later on happens that a once upon a time military president, Obasanjo, came back this time around, was elected as a took power as a civilian. As a strong man, he established a strong system. Today you can see the difference that is taking place in, uh, in, uh, in Nigeria. Their economic system is buoyant. It's growing and keep growing and keep growing. The, the economy is growing. It might not be the best, but they need to keep working on it. For Zimbabwe, at a particular period of time when Zimbabwe was struggling to put itself on the ground, Europeans came in with their so-called sanctions, break down the economy, and some people are happy that the Europeans actually 
sanctioned Zimbabwe because of one person, Mugabe. You can't want to punish a leader, then you punish the entire nation. That should tell you how wicked these people are. The wickedness of, those, of that sanction, that's a corporate sanction. You can't sanction the entire Zimbabwe because of its leadership. That should tell you there's bad faith behind every of that. And what's of it? Those sanctions have not been uplifted for years. I think since the early 2000s. It's 20 something years. You can't place those kind of sanctions, economic sanctions, trade sanctions on a nation and claim that you are struggling to punish the leadership while the people are suffering. And I will say this. Africa does not need to attach its currency to any external nation. Why? Because the so-called dollar is a piece of paper. It's a piece of shit. It has no, nothing back in it. The only thing back in a dollar is a government act, a policy, a government declaration. Let me put it that way. And so that gives you the understanding that the dollar is just a piece of paper. And it is the money that was used in buying oil in the world because of an agreement that came back in 1971 when Nixon, then president, removed the gold standard from the dollar. He destroyed the dollar. And that is why the dollar has been losing value year after year because there is no true commodity backing that piece of paper that is called dollar. And therefore, it is just a piece of printed paper that is there. So I don't see why it is more powerful and another nation needs to attach its wealth to it. Zimbabwe has the right as a nation to develop its currency. But that we have a problem in Africa because it is important. We, if there's something to copy from Europe, it is the fact that they, has, they have been able to establish what they call the European Union, a small group of people have successfully taken rule over the world because they have united themselves. But Africa, a giant, one of the giants of the world, is being ruled like a sheep. Why? Because we are divided in our ranks. And as long as we are divided in our ranks, where you go to Zimbabwe, there is a Zimbabwean dollar. When you run down to, uh, to South Africa, there is a run. You want to go to Malawi, there is the Kwasha. You want to go. So, so you just look at the whole confusion with currencies all over the place. Africa needs a single currency. Because almost all these nations are just named are under the African Union. And the African Union is supposed to create an African currency. And I will tell you, this is not a vision that I am coming with. That vision was established in 1963 when Kwame Nkrumah rose up and told his fellow colleagues, we have fought for political independence. And now that it is coming, we must prepare ourselves to fight for what? For economic independence. And the best way for it is for us to create a confederation. So they were supposed to unite then come up with one currency, which is this dream which Gaddafi was killed because of. He came up with the single currency idea, and then he was ready to put in enough gold to back it up so that Africa can have its own currency. Then the Americans and the French came in and killed him in his own country. Okay, uh, thank you. Sovereignty has been despised. All right, thank you. Uh, sorry for cutting you up, but uh, we have uh, a caller coming in uh, to contribute uh, to this uh, uh, topic. Uh, Mr. Elijah Enoko is joining us uh, to share his own perspective on a uh, topic for discussion this day. Hello to you, sir. If you can hear me, you can write on with your own uh, contribution. I 
think we have uh, difficulties connecting uh, to Mr. Elijah Enoako, who wants to share his own perspective on uh, this uh, topic. And thank you, of course, uh, Professor Mark Anthony. Let me come back uh, swiftly to you, uh, Professor Jose. We are looking at uh, uh, elections, uh, election processes in Africa, and of course, uh, the statement of uh, Emerson Nangagwa, which has attracted, of course, another debate across the African uh, continent. So the question is, uh, uh, we want to analyze uh, the, uh, uh, the potential advantages of that Africa can have if uh, the continent or, or if nations are fully uh, in control of their electoral uh, processes and of course how might this impact the establishment and uh, uh, the uh, consolidation of democratic systems across the African continent. Hello Professor Jose. I think, uh, Professor, just uh, we just lost him. You may want to answer to that question, uh, uh, Professor Mark Anthony. Like We're looking at uh, the advantages, of course, of Africa taking charge of. Uh, its democratic processes and of course we're looking at how this can help to solidate the uh, uh, electoral or democratic system across Africa. Uh, in the first place Africa does not need democracy. So trying to talk about Africa consolidating an African uh, uh, democracy, Africa does not need democracy as per se. Africa needs to develop its own uh, leadership systems, uh, but the system called democratic leadership, which was brought to us from the West, is not needed in Africa because we are not of the same background. We have we come from different backgrounds. We have a different way we see things and the different way we do things. So it is very important that we don't make that mistake. But yes. Africa needs to come up with a strong system that permits its uh, 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 political, uh, uh, let me say to that permits that the political system should be able to permit for growth. We have been trying to copy and paste in Africa where we say, okay, democracy might be worked in the United States. Some people do not know that it's not democracy that built the United States. No, it's not democracy. It's slave power. <laughs> it's slave power and dictators who built the United States. Yes, they have a system of accountability, which is what we should be copying. We should copy things that work. There is a system of accountability, meritocracy, and others that work for them. And so those are the things we take values and not the carcass we don't need the carcass we don't need the form we need the spirit that animates and so when we go for the form that's where we have a problem we need what animates the system the values so we must go out there in the war to copy the best values to implement in our continent not forms because those forms do not help i don't expect that africans should say okay uh, if a leader is supposed to come up to power he needs to rule for four years no that's not what works that's in the united states the constitution says four years then renewable ones that's in the united states that's not in africa if you go to a place like the Great Britain, it doesn't work like that. They don't use democracy as they say. You can tell me that it's a constitutional monarchy. Yes, but they don't use democracy. It is not four years that an individual has. They rule the lead based on their competence. So we need to bring in those values into Africa. The values of competency, the values of meritocracy, the values of accountability. When those values are pumped into our own system, there will be 
tangible results. It has nothing to do with the form. You don't tell me somebody needs to live for four years and then it's enough. No. Somebody can live for two years, it's still enough, but based on the values that he runs his leadership with. And so what Africa needs today is not forms. And we don't need those things here. And so that's why I said Africa does not need democracy. Somebody might not like this, but Africa does not need democracy. It doesn't work for Africa. I mean, the kind of democracy that is coming from the United States into Africa, it doesn't work in Africa. People might not understand that. But we need values that are workable. Look at Singapore. Okay, let me come back to you, oh, Professor, my God. Professor McAntony. Of course, uh, let, let's get uh, the, the viewpoint of Professor Jose. And of course, I'll be directing the, this question in light of historical experiences, Professor Jose, uh, with colonialism. Now, in your own opinion, what uh, measures can be taken to ensure that external actors do not uh, have a full grip or unduly influence African elections? And then, whilst the allowing for international observation and support. Uh, hello, yes. You hear me? You hear me? No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, Mark Anthony actually took the words from my mouth, eh? because I was, I was really talking uh, about to say that uh, it's not about elections themselves, it's not, it's not about democracy. It's about what uh, what we're doing in our in, in, in reality. I mean, the um, the spirit of of it. So you you can you, you can have these elections every five years, uh, but uh, and we have had that in Africa, and nothing has, has changed to to better. So uh, one man in power can can change uh, everything. So let's uh, for, for instance think about go back to history. In, about South Korea, for example, who built South for South Korea, that, that, that one that we know now to, today, uh, is uh, Park Chung Hin. So he, he did that in 19 years, ruling for 19 years. He was a dictator, and so on and so on. Uh, but he he built the nation, and then we have the, the South Korea that we know today. And for for Africa, for African countries, um, we need really yes, uh, we need to be united. And again, it's. Uh, so, yes, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big challenge because uh, uh, because the Western countries have uh, are working very hardly uh, on that. They have worked already, uh, starting from the um, African Union itself as an I mean, organization that you should be uniting uh, African uh, countries. But it's, it's, it's kind of working like an avatar of the European Union, European Commission. So I mean, they pay the, they pay the they pay the um, the salaries, the functioning of, of, the, of the organization. So we, we should not expect anything good coming from that organization, actually. And uh, I mean, uh, for for our uh, affairs to run, I mean, uh, in our favor, uh, we need yes, we need to to work on on training, training uh, truly patriotic uh, leaders, young leaders. And bet bet as Macanton was saying on the meritocracy and um, and, and, and skills skillful uh, this is skill of other people. Yeah? So uh, again, that's not democracy. They're not elections that is going to change uh, whatever it is. So we have to go back uh, to our, our roots and to use this the moment the momentum where you, we are we are, we are passing now. Yeah, that's. Uh, we have we're seeing the, those tectonic changes in the geopolitical um, dimension, yeah, uh, because of the, the the conflict in Ukraine. So we, we see now the the crackdown of the system, the Britain Wood system, the dollars, and so on, so on. So it's uh, it's uh, it's the real momentum, the real time for Africans to to sit down and rethink the I mean the, the, the future. Or oh, we sit down and rethink our future in, 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 in this case, because um, uh, there, there will not be a, a, such 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 a momentum uh, in a in a foreseen uh, future. So it's now to the, the time to to be the leaders, to be the owner, uh, 
uh, I mean, uh, of our own our own destination. So uh, that's it. So we have to stick to the momentum to to grab it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It's about African leaders being intentional. Let me stay with you, Professor Jerry. Of course, uh, you have highlighted same as uh, Professor uh, Mark Anthony that uh, Africa does not need democracy, or it needs a system that aligns with its culture. Of course, uh, that would suit uh, the, 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 the 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 African perspective. Now the question is because. We have uh, underlined the problems of Africa. We have underlined the fact that there is need to put an end to foreign or Western interference on electoral processes in Africa, because some pundits feel like it's when we involve the international bodies of that we can guarantee free, fair elections in Africa. But now some are also of the viewpoint of that Africa is capable of conducting elections and also ensuring a uh, democratic, uh, of course, free, fair uh, process. But pro the problem is now on the aspect of political wills, because uh, some people, I, I think uh, Mr. Elijah, who just commented, it was unable for him to make this call through, so he just uh, left his viewpoint saying that uh, uh, Pan-Africanists, of course, are rallying behind uh, leaders or leadership that is not exemplary for Africa, and he thinks uh, uh, Emerson Nangagwa is not uh, the the perfect leader for uh, Zimbabwe, and of course he's rallying with, uh, behind the, the 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 ideologies of Pan Africanism and other uh, the, the, the statements of win of change across Africa to have a grip on Zimbabweans and on Zimbabweans, uh, Zimbabwe's economy. Uh, do you share this perspective or uh, you, you have another a contrary view to, to his own uh, analysis of this thing? Well, uh, I mean, Emerson Nagabwe is a politician. Uh, uh, we still have to see, I mean, it's, um, we, we, we mostly see, we, we don't need to, um, uh, politician, uh, politicians in power. We need, we need uh, statesmen in power. Yeah, people who think beyond their own belly, they beyond their own interest. They, 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 they plan and they, they plan what their grandchildren will collect. Right, their children or grandchildren will, will, will collect. So if he is um, uh, a politician. Or maybe, maybe he's, uh, he's, he's uh, shifting to a states statesman. Um, he can use uh, whatever narrative uh, which uh, sounds uh, good and suitable to to achieve the goals. If if he is struggling, and actually I can say that uh, he he's doing he's doing quite quite well uh, for the situation for Zimbabwean situation. We've seen now that Zimbabwe has has um, grown a width. Uh, is, 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 is autosufficient in uh, with uh, by by planting by by collecting harvesting uh, in thirty thousand um, tons more than what they what Zimbabwe itself needs. So it's it's it's, it's a picture that you didn't see you didn't see when when Mugabe was in power actually. Uh, so all the, those those uh, that achievement is is uh, is a sign of something that's it's been done structurally. Maybe, maybe it's not seen for seenable. We can't see right now because uh, usually these the, the things are, they, 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 they still work on the, on the on the core. Yeah, still on the core. And in the next next five, ten uh, to, to twenty years, we will we'll see the results. So uh, I, I, I think I think it's the case the case we have to to judge uh, the people, judge the leaders. Uh, for their deeds, okay. Uh, what, what what was really really done? I mean, the the changes uh, in the institutions that were were made since he came to power, uh, and we're not expecting them to work just like that right away. So I I I, I, th I think we still still have to to give a chance to the man, but again. Uh, calling and urging the the the, the men the the, the 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 party the ruling party to to promote more young people young people to because Nelson Chamisa is, is is having that place because he's having he's being uh, quoted as a 
as the leader of opposition and gaining I mean, some sympathies because of the of his age. Yes, uh, the Zanu PF is uh, is infested. I mean, is is struggling with gerontology, and um, it's time to to change the situation because uh, otherwise all all things that have been, have been done so far might just get lost because people really because Africa is a very young continent. Okay, and young people okay tend to 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 see wanting to see another young people ruling for example okay and uh, Mnangagwa is all, it's also is already 80 and we know this situation with with Zimbabwe with the Mugabe and so on and so on so it's uh, there's a lot there's a lot of challenge but it doesn't mean doesn't mean that the, that ZANU PF should, so should step aside uh, they they should show that they can improve they must improve you improve doing things yeah yeah so i i, I think that's it. That, that that's what's happened thank you Okay, thank you for that, Professor Jose. And I uh, think uh, we're going to get uh, Mr. Ledger uh, on call now. Of course, if you can hear me say, you can just go on with your contribution. Oh, can you hear me on the studio? Five and five. Thank you. Um, gentlemen, I just want to, I just uh, had uh, you guys pop up my screen here and I decided to watch what you guys were discussing in a, I beg to defy a little bit. First and foremost, I do agree that African needs institutions. There's no doubt about that. And I do agree that the world should not be locked in here in the affairs of Africa. Let us be careful not to give cover for draconian tycoons and oligarchs to continue to plunder the resources of Africa in the name of fighting the West. If we're not careful, we're going to fall prey to those kind of dictators who want to come and plunder our resources and say, oh, the West want to come and take over. Look at what is happening in Zimbabwe. I wanted to look carefully what is happening in Zimbabwe for six years. The power has been rolling to understand the demises of the ordinary people. When we speak, let's talk to the demises of the ordinary people. Please, let's listen to what the ordinary people are talking about. Ordinary Zimbabweans, one of the resources of this country is gold. And look at the exploitation of that gold in that country. It goes to the family of Emerson Nangawa. The Corruption Commission has come out with a with drastic report that has dropped him and his family and his friends and his colleagues. They are the one exploiting the goal of this country. So if we have leaders that have shown us that they do not rule the interests of the people, carrying out the canopy of Pan-Africanism and said that we, these people, should be there because democracy does not work for Africa. It's not serving the common interest of the ordinary citizens. Let us understand that Zimbabwe was going through sanctions from the West because of what was happening. The Zanu PF party promised a land reform that was supposed to distribute land to the ordinary citizens so that they can use it to cultivate and become self-sufficient. But look at that land reform policy. It became an issue where you are now giving land to your accolades, to your tribesmen, to your village people, political people that are in your power, and the ordinary people that fought for the independence of this country, of that country, still do not have land. So let us make sure that when we are defending Africa, we are defending the interests of the common man not the interest of somebody who wants to use Pan-Africanism as a panacea to stay in power. I say no. Number two, if you look at the campaign that is going on now, study a little bit of what is going on. You will see that opposition rallies have been banned in different locations and they're not able to campaign. And you tell me that this is what we should promote. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. It doesn't matter that we're talking about fighting the West, which I agree 100% that the West should not be in the interest of Africa. But again, what kind of leadership do we want in Africa? Is that the kind of leadership that's the interest of Africans? 
that the kind of leadership that respects aspirations of people because at the end of the day, if you talk of Pan-Africanism and it doesn't affect the life of the ordinary citizens, that Pan-Africanism has failed. If it doesn't affect what the people are looking for, it has failed. So look at the aspirations of the people, what people are yearning for, what they want, what they are suffering for, the stakes of the economy, access to whatever they want to have. And if the people are not having those things, and you have a leader who do not feel into those aspirations, that is not Pan-Africanism. My Pan-Africanism is not Sankara, who came to power within a couple of years, became the ordinary president of the ordinary people. That's what Pan-Africanism is. Pan-Africanism is not some strong man sitting up there, getting everything for himself, plundering the economy of the country to his own benefit and his village, and then we call it Pan-Africanism. That is not Pan-Africanism. I turn it over to you. Mr. Elijah Enrako for uh, contributing. Of course, the lines are still open. If you can call and uh, share your own perspective on this topic, it will be very important. Remember, we are making Africa a great. You want to say one uh, uh, last thing, of course. Yes, uh, uh, I just remember, uh, okay, we I, are already above time. Yeah, just, just yeah. to respond to Elijah who came up in there. One of the mistakes most of us we do is you don't sit over you don't sit in the united states and because you read information or you listen to uh, western media with their so much evil propaganda and then you claim that that is what is happening you should go down to zimbabwe and stay in zimbabwe to hear the words from the people in the land what are they saying you realize that is different from what you are listening over there in the west it is not because Emerson has decided to give the mining of gold to local citizens that you guys should say he is at the head of the mining uh, uh, corruption that is happening in Zimbabwe. He has instead given mining of gold to the locals. What was not before? That is a way of saying, my people, I want to empower you. And so I don't understand why some Africans are so, so gullible with their way of consuming information. When we consume information, we must go back to the source to find Check out whether check. it is correct or not. We don't air it when we do not know the truth about it. It is true whatsoever the Western media says becomes true for all those who are gullible. But I will say this. We Africans, I will be one of those individuals who will inform you I don't talk against my own in my house. I can speak to him when I'm sitting in front of him, but not sitting in the foreign country to talk against my own. I will not do that. And so it is true that sometimes we will, they will claim that we are supporting those who are uh, maltreating Africans. We do not like, I don't, as, as an individual, any leader is supposed to pass through justice. Which implies that if you are doing wrong today, justice will meet up with you tomorrow. That is why we need systems that have accountability as part of the values that conduct and determine the way things are done. Not that we just sit and we are talking. No, okay. we don't need democracy and we will not even support it. So I don't even think that the so-called opposition party should have any campaign because they are being used by the West to manipulate our people and push them into creating instability in our continent. That's where we have a lot of problems. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Professor Mark Anthony. Uh, one last uh, sentence or statement from you, Professor Jose, uh, regarding the interaction or uh, intervention of Mr. Elijah Enwaku or on generally on the topic this day. Well, let, let me uh, once again uh, agree with Mark Cantoni because that's that that's it. That's it. Uh, we um, we don't know. People don't know what's really going on in Zimbabwe. The, the achievements they've 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 made uh, in under those severe sanctions are remarkable, and um, they should not throw it away. The, all those the, the sacrifice the Zimbabwean people uh, went under or did is a. Uh, is something to be preserved and not going back to 
to to those um, uh, that, that system and bringing people again about accountability. And he has uh, he, he has the, the inter intervener was saying okay about, about the dividing the uh, giving minds to to locals and so on and so on. That's normal. Let's see, let's see about Russia. Vladimir Putin did the same. Okay, uh, he came to power. One of I mean, his uh, his people, his friends got got uh, uh, major I mean, major wealth of the country. I mean, uh, the, the, to run, but in, in one condition, the condition that it should work for Russia, and uh, everything is in Russia. So uh, you, you, you see, you see now that Russia should uh, actually cope with the with the sanctions. I mean, it's that there's no matter. Uh, I mean, um, of course, uh, of course, it, it goes and uh, stage there yeah, for the development. Uh, but uh, but but it's the first step to be done. Uh, all the wealthy the kind of the country must be, uh, go to locals. Of course, you will have another question: Who are those locals? And it's, uh, it's, it's a matter of, of, of time, and we, you'll see the the system very well implanted. There will be another stage of. Of, uh, of justice, of stage of uh, um, equal uh, distribution of the, of, the, of the richness, but for now, you, you need that to to happen. There's there's no way out of that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Melani. Uh, thank you for the insight on this uh, topic uh, for today, uh, where we analyze uh, the statement made by Zimbabwean President Emerson Nangagwa that uh, there is a uh, need to put an end to Western interference on uh, electoral processes in uh, Africa. Thank you so much for your time. And of course, also wanting to extend thanks to you, Professor Mark Anthony, for the great insight. And of course, not forgetting uh, those who participated by leaving messages on our Facebook page, Africa Media TV, and acknowledging also the technical crew for ensuring that the program was a success. Uh, remember, uh, the world has become more and more interconnected and multilateralism has increased. And of course, actors or stakeholders, especially in Africa, needs to be uh, intentional about, of course, taking advantage, uh, advantage I beg your pardon, of uh, the happenings across the continent to bring about positive change, change in leadership, change in governance, and change in everything that can bring about economic buoyancy across Africa. Thank you. It was a great time. But don't go away. Keep having a lovely moment in the company of programs on Africa Media TV. <music>